ruthless. Love is baby soft, a fragrance for the moment of discovery. Do you remember the 1980s? If so, then you'll definitely remember all of these amazing beauty products that were popular back then. Hello lovelies, my name is Laura and I'm here to talk about some of the best and the worst beauty products from the 1980s. A lot of these products were found on every woman's vanity because they were just that good. Whether you're looking for a new makeup routine or just want to reminisce about the good old days, this video is for you. The 1980s were a tumultuous decade in American history. Marked by sweeping social and political changes, the early 1980s saw the election of President Ronald Reagan, who promised to restore American pride and expand security both domestically and internationally. But shortly after he took office, cracks began to appear in the nation's economy, leading to a recession that lasted until the middle of the decade. On the social front, 1980s American America was shaped by challenges to traditional values and conservative beliefs concerning civil rights and feminism. Other major developments during this time included increasing support for environmentalism, advances in technology such as personal computers, and popular culture arguably peaking with blockbuster movies such as Back to the Future and The Terminator. As the 1980s came to a close, Americans were beginning to grapple with the consequences of their actions over the past decade. Many still felt proud of their accomplishments, while others were becoming more aware of areas where they had not made enough progress. The 1980s will go down in history as an era of moral complexities and contradictions. Despite facing a multitude of difficulties throughout its duration, 1980s America remains one of the most fascinating historical periods for many people around the world today. 1980s American pop culture was a time of vibrant energy that left a mark on history. From the 1980s new wave tunes to the colorful fashion trends to the neon aesthetics of Miami, 1980s culture was far-reaching and influential. This era was characterized by groundbreaking innovation in music, style, and entertainment. Music moves like Madonna's Like a Virgin and Michael Jackson's Beat It marked a dawning age of pop revolution, while movies like The Breakfast Club and Ferris Bueller's Day Off defined the 1980s. Fashion-wise, a 1980s pop culture embraced bold patterns, crop silhouettes, from colorful prints to denim on denim, hairdos worthy of a perm and geometric mirrored sunglasses. Seeking refuge from the conventional, People flocked to arcades for hours of Pac-Man filled entertainment or danced down the streets in choreographed moves perfected during musical numbers on shows like Fame. 1980s American pop culture was dazzling and dizzying. It made many a statement about independence and self-expression that continues to reverberate decades later. Even today, its influence can be seen in everything from contemporary music to vintage design elements making massive comebacks. It's safe to say that 1980s pop culture will never go out of style. 1980s movie star culture was filled with vibrant, unforgettable personalities that remain beloved even to this day. With no shortage of iconic female movie stars arising through the ranks during this decade, it's easy to see why. Some of the most notable 1980s actresses include Molly Ringwald, who portrayed America's sweetheart in films like The Breakfast Club and Pretty in Pink. There was also Sigourney Weaver, known for her powerful performance as Ripley in Alien and its three sequels. And of course, no list would be complete without the so-called queen of the 1980s, Nicole Kidman, starred in many films, including Dead Calm and leading into the 1990s, Days of Thunder. Each of these women provided us with an unforgettable cinematic moments that still live on today as part of 1980s female movie star legacy. Next time you see one of their movies pop up on your TV or streaming service, 
Don't forget to take a moment to appreciate their tremendous talent and enduring fame. In the 1980s, beauty trends took their lead from the female movie stars of the day. Bold makeup looks define glamour with bright eyeshadows and neon pink, electric blue and deep purple hues. Hair was high maintenance with perms and crimping irons being all the rage. Volume was also key for 1980s hairstyling with women opting for big bouffant hairdos punctuated by accessories like scrunchies and headbands. One thing you wouldn't find on 1980s female stars were subtle styles as every look was extra large from shoulder pads to hoop earrings. Whether it be Princess Diana or Madonna, 1980s beauty trends certainly made an impact then and even more so now since they are making a comeback on runways and red carpets alike. They may have gone away for a time, but 1980s fashion will forever remain a timeless classic. 1980s beauty products captivated the imaginations of people around the world. Hairspray that promised to deliver, big touchable hair, and eyeshadow palettes in vivid hues filled store shelves as consumers eagerly bought up these must-have items thanks to the power of 1980s pop culture. One of the most iconic 1980s beauty products was undoubtedly blue eyeshadow. It was an avant-garde look that pushed fashion boundaries and allowed wearers to make a powerful statement with their makeup. Teased hair, which popularized an edgier look and could be achieved with mousses and gels, was also a must-have item at the time. Lipstick and daring shades were also popular, allowing wearers to embrace Race of vibrant new trends like neon cold blues or hot pinks with ease. 1980s beauty products will live on forever in our memories thanks to their revolutionary impact on the beauty scene back then and even today. The primary products available in the fashion and cosmetics industries were the 1980s makeup trends. In numerous articles regarding a 1980s beauty, well-known brands like Maybelline and CoverGirl Cosmetics have been highlighted. Bright color pops, lipstick that changed colors based on your mood, and many more styles were popular at the time. Here are some of the most popular cosmetic companies of the 1980s. And the first is CoverGirl. Even in the 1980s, CoverGirl was a successful company. They sell lipstick, foundation, mascara, eyeliner, and other cosmetics. The goods were available in every color. Whether you like vivid colors or neutral tones, you will discover one that suits you. American cosmetic company CoverGirl was established in 1961. The Noxzema Chemical Company is the owner of it. The company creates a variety of cosmetics, but their marketing strategy is to let actors, singers, and models wear their makeup. As a result, the term cover girl was used to refer to women who appeared on the covers of the publications. Christine Brinkley, Nikki Taylor, and a number of other celebrities have served as brand ambassadors. Additionally, it was one of the most well-known brands in the world to use animal testing. Thankfully, that has changed. Now, next on the list is lip smackers. Each girl's bag had to have a lip smacker. And lip smackers were an addiction in the 1980s, and they had fun flavors like cherry and watermelon. In 1973, the cosmetics brand Bon Bell released a strawberry scented lip gloss and balm, which quickly gained enormous popularity among pre-teens worldwide. Soon after, orange pop, jelly beans, and tropical punch became available as additional tastes. And not all of the standouts are fruity, Dr. Pepper and 7-Up, which had unusual flavors, became well-known variants. Lip smackers are unquestionably more fascinating than a typical lip balm. And I remember these in the 90s and early 2000s. I definitely use lip smackers. And Maybelline, there were some outrageous stuff there in the 1980s, but today their offerings are much more sophisticated and restrained. Everything from a foundation to lipstick to eyeshadow is part of their assortment. One of Maybelline's strongest candidates was the kissing potion. This delicious lip gloss had a red top and was packaged in a clear tube. The fact that this product tasted sweet and didn't leave any residue was its best feature. Flavored roll-on lip gloss. Shines up lips or lipstick. Outshines pot gloss and stick gloss by a smile. No color, just a kiss of flavor. Strawberry, mint, cola. Six flavors so delicious, 
Share it with a friend. Hello, fresh face. That's you with a little help from Maybelline. Fresh and lovely kissing potion. Why make up sensibly priced? The lip gloss from Kissing Coolers was another excellent item. It tasted and smelled delicious. They included flavors like cherry cola, strawberry fizz, watermelon swirl, and others that were distinctive. <laughs> Super flavored stick gloss and grape, strawberry, cherry, lemonade, orange, and bubble gum. Great taste, smooth, shine. Okay, I got one. What kisses your lips but isn't human? Kissing stick from Maybelline. Lip gloss embodies all the things that teenage females enjoyed in the 1980s. And next we have Mood Magic Lipstick. The Mood Magic Lipstick was one item from the 1980s that was both extremely original and relevant today. It is a lipstick that will change color based on how you are feeling. They came in a variety of tubes and the lipstick itself initially appeared green but would change color when warm. Magic Lipstick. The magic is you. Your body chemistry creates a color that's yours alone. Mood Magic Lipstick. Your eyes tell you it's green. Your lips say, I love you, Mood Magic. Let your lips turn on your perfect color. Mood Magic Lipstick. Mood Magic Lipstick is available at the Beauty Center at Walgreens. And next we have Clairol Benders. The 1980s saw a lot of innovation in the curling world. Everyone felt the urge to twist these strange, flexible benders, sometimes known as literal hot rods, in your hair because conventional rollers were just too simple, it seems. You're gonna curl their hair, you're gonna make them stare. Nobody can compare, no one would even dare. You're gonna curl your hair, you got a message to say. You're gonna curl your hair. And next we have Electric Youth by Debbie Gibson. After releasing an album and smash single named Electric Youth, late 80s teen queen Debbie Gibson did what any sane pop artist would do. She launched a perfume with the same name. When you were a tween in the 1980s, if you didn't smell like a love's baby softs, odds are you did. And next we have Conair Impressions. And this is another advancement in heat tools. And this one's really interesting because it burns images into your hair using different shapes like heart and star shapes. So it's basically a crimping iron with plates to make these shapes. And it's very interesting. I don't really remember this when I was super young in the 80s, but I definitely remember the crimping iron. Oh, you can always tame it for a more casual style. It doesn't cost a fortune to look like a billion with a crimping and next we have Faz, and this was a cosmetics company targeted to tweens in the 80s. Faz could be used as hair clips, bracelets, and of course bolo ties in addition to being the only blush, eyeshadow, and lip gloss your mother would permit you to wear. So it was jewelry combined with makeup in one. And when it comes to hair, we have salon selectives. Many of the advertisements for salon selectives began with a question that was intended to be rhetorical, such as, why do some women appear like they just left the salon? However, we have a sneaking hunch the women in the advertising may have had hairstyles assist them. They claim it's because these women merely use salon selective products. Salon Beautiful. Every day. And a popular perfume was Obsession by Calvin Klein. Obsession is still produced today, but so many people associate it with the 1980s because of its first advertisement, which was widely seen as very odd and strange, and I agree, it is a very avant-garde, I guess you could say. Calvin Klein's Obsession. Oh, the smell of it. At famous bar. 
And next we have Sea Breeze. Although Sea Breeze's advertisements tried to make you believe otherwise, using their toner actually felt more like the estrogen's harsh sting than anything else. And this one was originally launched in 1906 as an antiseptic for use on minor cuts and scratches. Seabreeze was purchased by Bristol Myers Squibb in 1979 and relaunched as a face cleansing estrogen. And I've tried it, and it definitely gives you a tingly feeling. And next we have Well Balsam. In the 1980s, everyone wanted to look like Brooke Shields. So it's not surprising that Wella Balsam hired her after she made such a stir by endorsing Calvin Klein trousers to persuade women that they could obtain hair like hers by simply switching to their shampoo. If you're not happy with your hair, get with Wella Balsam Instant Conditioner and make your hair come alive. <laughs> And next we have the hairspray Rave. Shut your eyes and imagine dousing your then gravity defying bangs in Rave hairspray. And it was definitely all the rage in the 80s. Try Rave soft hairspray. The flexible hold you can comb through. And next we have Lee Press-On Nails. If you didn't lose at least one of your active length Lee Press-On Nails in the gym class in the 80s, then you definitely weren't a true 80s gal. And I kind of remember buying these in the early 90s when I was a kid and I think they just kept falling off. Everyone wanted long dynasty nails in just a few minutes. Every prom girl's go-to brand was Lee Press-On Nails for a quick, easy Glamazon manicure. And these were Lee press on nails. They didn't always fit for sure, especially the thumbs. It was like there was some lucky thumb model out there and everyone else just had to deal with these thick stumps. And sometimes they didn't stick on quite so well. However, they were still popular even though they did not last very long. Lee High Fashion Nail Tips. And next we have the perfume Malibu Musk. Millions of girls who had never been to Malibu thought they could smell like California girls for the duration of the aerosol mist, 30 minute duration when they bathed themselves in it. And this was another popular perfume. And next we have finesse shampoo and conditioner. Early 1980s finesse advertisements starring Sharon Stone used the motto, sometimes you need a little finesse, sometimes you need a lot. This conditioning shampoo's intoxicating scent was something we definitely needed a lot of. And I kind of remember this. I think you can still buy finesse. Sometimes you need a bit of finesse. Sometimes you need a lot. Introducing finesse shampoo. It's activated by the amount of dirt and oil in your hair. So it cleans deep on the days you need it, gently on the days you don't, without drying, without overcleaning. Sometimes you need a bit of finesse. Sometimes you need a lot. And next we have caboodles. Fun fact, after Vanna White revealed in an interview that she kept her makeup in a fishing tackle box, Caboodles was introduced in 1986, and I still have a vintage Caboodles, and it definitely is handy for organizing your makeup. And next we have Noxzema, the original deep cleansing cream. In the 1980s, you needed Noxzema in your medicine cabinet to have clear, acne-free skin. Proactive didn't exist yet. Nothing compares to the satisfaction of dipping into a brand new tub of creamy wipe substance and applying it to your T-zone. I do like the invigorating feeling of using Noxzema. For decades, Noxzema was an iconic brand of skincare. It was used by generations of customers around the world and became a household name thanks to its signature blue and white packaging and jingle that everyone knew by heart. <laughs> 
But Noxzema's history goes back much further than its mainstream fame. The Noxzema story begins in Baltimore at the end of the 19th century. Pharmacist George Bunting developed Noxzema as a medicating cold cream made with camphor, menthol, and eucalyptus oils, ingredients he believed had healing powers for irritated skin. Soon after he launched Noxzema in 1914, it became a wild success as people all over the world were buying it to soothe their skin from conditions caused by harsh winter weather and sunburns. It has since become an American classic, one that stands out for both its effectiveness and nostalgic value. From something small, 104 years ago, Noxzema is still loved by many today. Its popularity still grows and is now available in countries all over the world. No matter how far and wide Noxzema reaches, one thing remains clear. This product has come a long way since its early beginnings. Get Noxzema Skin Cream or New Noxzema Liquid Skin Cream. As it cleanses. And next we have 1006. Why did 1006 get the nickname Lotion? The name 1006 was likewise a mystery, although I can only presume that it had something to do with pH balancing or some other similarly 1980s scientific designation. People in the 1980s didn't question the production of the extremely serious antiseptic cleanser by Bon Bell, the company that brought us Lip Smackers, America's least serious beauty product, no OxyTube, ever proclaimed serious about skin like the amber bottle of 1006. Bon Bell 1006 cleanser is a piece of history that no beauty enthusiast should ignore. Bon Bell was founded in 1927 by 10 year old Jesse Bon and it all began with Bon Bell selling face cream door to door. Bon quickly made a name for herself and Bon Bell eventually grew into a multi-million dollar cosmetics business. Bon Bell also developed Bon Bell 1006 cleanser which became one of Bon signature products. Bon Bell 1006 cleanser is still recognized as one of the most iconic skin cleansing products ever produced and is still used by millions today. This cleanser was revolutionary for its time, featuring ingredients such as alcohol, alum, glycerol that help cleanse the skin better than any product before it. And they believed in quality over quantity and always kept their products affordable for everyone to enjoy. And the success was striking proof that even though you can't always judge something at first glance, sometimes you need to look beyond the surface to find true beauty within. Such is the story behind 1006 Cleanser, a small product with a big history. It remains a timeless reminder to never underestimate anything because it doesn't look perfect on the outside. An inspiration lesson not only for customers but anyone looking to make their mark in this world. And next we have Bonnie Bell Blushing Gel. It appeared as a gel but when it dried your cheeks were covered in an odd red Kool-Aid stain. You would sometimes have to squeeze out a chunk or two when it congealed a little in the tube. A blushing gel seems so romantic as if wearing it would ensure that you would be adorable and embarrassed by a flirtatious boy's attention. And next we have Love's Baby Soft. Love's Baby Soft was a preferred perfume for the under 13 crowd since until you wore perfume, you weren't quite grown up. The girliest of the girly scents was available in the 1970s when the commercials were somewhat unsettling and exaggerated the attractiveness of young girls. But it wasn't until the 1980s that a lot of people discovered the perfume. Vicky from The Love Boat and Valerie both smelled like Love's Baby Soft. It was the powdered scent of attractive women sporting Bermuda bags, banana clips, and retainers fashioned of paper clips. Love's Baby Soft Perfume is one of the most iconic scents in history in some ways. It definitely has a lot of pop culture behind it. It was introduced in 1974 and quickly rose to fame due to its soft, gentle fragrance and cute baby powder bottle. The Love's Baby Soft Company wanted the scent to be associated with beauty innocence and nostalgia. So they used images of young women in their ads to emphasize these qualities. 
Love's Baby Soft became incredibly popular among teenage girls during this era who not only liked the scent but also used it as a way to express their unique personalities. Teenage girls would often buy several bottles of Love's Baby Soft at once and share them with their friends as gifts, helping Love's Baby Soft develop a loyal customer base and still exist today. Its popularity has endured for decades thanks to its accessible price point and captivating sweet aroma that still brings back fond memories of childhood for many individuals around the world. Love's Baby Soft is indeed an unforgettable brand that will continue spreading its signature sweetness with each passing generation. And next we have Tinkerbell scent. This chic little set included Tinkerbell cologne, a big bottle of brown liquid with a flowery perfume that was bound to splash all over the bathroom, along with scented soap and a matching talc, making it possible for every little girl to smell like a cocktail of delicious chemicals. I've never actually smelled this one, but it looks interesting. I kind of like the cute packaging. And then we have Tinkerbell Boo Poo, and these are adorable manicure sets and Boo Poo is brush on, peel off, nail polish, and other cosmetics sold to young girls in the 70s and 80s. And I think I remember having peel off nail polish in the 80s and 90s, to be honest. And leave it to Tinkerbell to learn the newest grooming techniques. Boo Poo was available in six vibrant hues, and they were super simple to peel off, and you didn't have to use any nail polish remover. Additionally, they are safe as well and enjoyable because they're non-toxic, and you can find a Boo Poo and and Tinkerbell's many other high quality grooming items in shops all over the world to discover for yourself. I don't know if you can still find them, but definitely in the 80s. And next we have Estee Lauder's Advanced Night Repair. And this one was founded in 1982. The product was initially introduced as a night repair cellular recovery complex, which makes a promise to speed up skin cell renewal while you sleep. Nearly 10 years later, in 1991, it developed into Advanced night repair that we are familiar with today. The Holy Grail has also undergone a number of improvements throughout time to make sure it keeps up with the modern women's changing skincare requirements. Night repair, now with Frankie's. And next we have Lancome's Dual Finish Foundation. Launched in 1981, it had texture that morphed and was innovative at the time. The ability of the compact to be used dry, like a matte powder or wet, like a liquid base, was massive, according to makeup artist Sandy Linter, who frequently collaborated with models like Christy Brinkley and Patty Hansen in the 1980s. According to Mary Greenwell, a makeup artist, the hybrid product covered skin, but in the most natural way, using the same method of application then as she does now, blending it with fingers for a result that looks like genuine skin. Now I really want to try this one. And another popular product was a vibrant fuchsia lipstick in the 1980s. And YSL lip colors and purples and fuchsias were all the rage. According to Greenwell, the early 1980s marked a turning point for makeup. It was a transition time from 1970s makeup after David Bowie, when colors were still full on, but you wanted to keep the natural beauty of the face. Rouge Couture lipstick in number Number 19, a vivid magenta shade that debuted in 1979, really took off during this period. Number 19's bomb-like texture glides onto your lips, emphasizing the fullness of the lips without being overwhelming, which accounts for its continuing appeal. And yes, this lipstick, I definitely would say, is one of the most iconic colors of the 20th century. And next we have Bright White Nail Polish. And Essie's Blanc, an opaque white nail lacquer, was used to grace the French groom tips of everyone in the 1980s. So French manicures were super popular. And you can also use it under bright neon colors to make them pop, which was also popular. And the Essie brand started in 1981. According to Linda Wells, chief creative officer of Revlon and creator of Allure magazine. So it's definitely an 80s brand. And perfumes in the 80s were mainly heady floral fragrances, described as having a unique warmth, sensuality, and richness. And Chanel's 
Chanel's Coco, a floral spice forward scent that was first launched in 1984, it was super popular in the 80s. It was so well liked in the 1980s that women would always leave you with some on your cheeks after kissing hello and goodbye. And it was known to be the younger version of Chanel number no. five. And a lot of people say that the scent still makes them think of the extravagance and creativity of the 1980s. I actually haven't smelled this one. I'm curious now to see how it's the younger version of Chanel number no. five. Let me know if you've smelled it. <laughs> With 1980s beauty products disappearing from shelves faster than you can say hairspray, the golden age of Baroque styling is slowly fading away. Every single 1980s maven had their own vanity decked out with innovative products. Blusher in a myriad of colors, eyeshadow palettes, lipsticks, and glamorous fragrances. To this day, some brave, trendsetting souls still use 1980s beauty products to maintain their vintage allure or to pay tribute to a simpler time but no matter how hard we try and recreate these beautiful moments from the past nothing will ever compare to the genuine 1980s experienced by those who lived through it Though these seemingly insignificant objects have been forgotten over the years, they are an integral part of history which opened up new possibilities for generations to come, transforming beauty standards forever. That's why 1980s beauty products will always leave a mark on our lives. Thank you for watching and don't forget to check out my other decades of vintage beauty products. This has been your history lesson for today and don't forget, let's never step backwards into yesterday Yesterday's outdated trends always keep me moving forward and stay fabulous. All right, I'll see you guys soon. Bye.